Well, let's just take one more story on aviation before we join our Abuja studios. Well, the House Committee on Aviation today began its investigation into the purchase of two armoured cars by the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority. At a hearing in Abuja, the lawmakers were told by an official of the agency that the purchase was indeed approved. Officials of the agency, however, insisted that the procurement followed due process. Our correspondent, Lanri Lassisi, reports. It's the investigative hearing by the House of Representatives into the $1.6 million purchase of two armored cars by the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority. Officials of the agency were at the hearing to provide answers to the committee. Whether the purchase was authorized by any appropriation law. The official who spoke for the agency had served as acting director general of the NCAA and overseen the procurement of the vehicles. On the 25th of April 2013, Federal Ministry of Aviation conveyed approval of, for the acquisition of the pressure vehicles through lease financing. A slight debate ensured over the total amount the country is now committed to pay back on the transaction. The question whether we have committed the Nigerian uh, public funds to the tune of 643 million, that answer is no. What we have committed was to the bank, and what we are committed to the bank is that instrumental payment on a yearly basis. <laughs> The Bureau of Public Procurement also made a presentation. If you have goods, 100 million and below can be approved by the Ministerial Tenders Board. But what we are discussing is 200 above 100 million. So 100 million and above for goods. Such procurement is supposed to be approved by the Minister. Federal Executive Council. The committee is expected to submit its report next week. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. Well, we take you live now to our Abuja studios where Gloria Umezuke is standing by. Hi, Gloria. Good to see you again, Nijama. Many thanks for joining us here live from the nation's capital. The Edo State Governor Adam Toshomale is accusing the police of aiding ballot box snatching, supervising electoral fraud, and intimidating voters in a just concluded assault northeast local government election held in the state. At the swearing in of the council chairman, Mr. Sam Obo, at the government house in Benin City, the governor said he is embarrassed that the police have become electoral officials working in favor of the PDP. In a swift reaction, the PDP accused him of fraudulently securing victory in the election with the aid of the State Electoral Commission. The recent ASA Northeast local government election has been concluded and the Edo State Independent Electoral Commission went ahead to announce the results. PDP scored 3314, while APC scored 12672. And having complied with the requirements of the law and having scored the majority of the valid votes, Mr. Sam Obo of APC is hereby declared as the chairman of Isa Notice local government area. However, it seems Governor Adams of Shomale is unhappy over the outcome of the polls, despite swearing in a winner on the platform of the APC. He's accusing the police of aiding PDP officials to manipulate the elections. As a Nigerian, I'm embarrassed that the police is involved in carrying electoral materials, arresting EDSEC returning officers, coercing them into a police station, and converting the police post to a collecting center, supervised by policemen imported or exported from Lagos and Abuja in order to subvert the will of the people of not Chairman of the PDP in Edo State, however, disagrees with Governor Shomale over the allegation that the PDP was aided by the police and says the party is ready to defend the result at any level. How can he be accusing the police 
of ADPDP to win an election and is swearing in APC and a, an APC candidate that was not legally qualified to participate in the election. This is one result that will never stand. We will challenge it in the court of law, we will challenge it in the court of public opinion, and we will challenge it even with the members of the press who are free to verify our claim. A winner may have emerged from the SR Northeast local government election, but with the ensuing dispute over the poll, Nigerians now wonder if there will be yet another election for its chairmanship again. In order for international laws to be effective, they must accommodate contributions from emerging states and take into account emerging international challenges. But this is from the, the position of a member of the International Court of Justice, the Honorable Justice Abdul Koroma, at an international law forum in Abuja. Justice Koroma urged African leaders not to sign international treaties without considering how they affect and reflect their diversities and cultures. Our correspondent, Amaka Okafo, reports. Members of the Bar and the Bench and the Academia converge in Abuja to discuss issues of international law, especially as it affects Africa. By the fiat of Speakers at the forum believe international laws must consider the voices of African states and emerging global challenges. The international law needs to respond quickly and pragmatically to evolutions in the international sphere. This is particularly necessary if we are to successfully confront contemporary challenges to global peace such as armed conflicts, terrorism, insurgence and extremism. When we talk about universality of international law and international human rights, we want it to be one that encompasses all aspects of the world, all spheres of human endeavor, all jurisdictions of the world. Delivering the memorial lecture, a member of the International Court of Justice, Justice Abdul Kuroma, advised African leaders to always consider the implications of all international treaties before signing them. If African states had not rushed to the signing, to the ratification of the Rome Statute, for the establishment of the International Criminal Court, maybe the position would be different today. The major countries in the world, the United States, India, Russia, they have not ratified the Rome Statute, and perhaps for very good reason. They wanted to see how the Rome Statute would play out. I'm not saying that it was a wrong policy to undertake to discharge I'm only saying that when we undertake such um, policies, it should be done from a position of seriousness. We should assess the implications before committing ourselves to such international instruments. Above all, these jurists want international laws to be effective. Therefore, they are advocating equality amongst countries of the world when it comes to international and universal laws. Amaka. Ukafu, Channels, Television News. And that'll be all from Abuja. Even now to you, Ijoma. Uh, thanks a lot, Gloria. All the way from the nation's capital in Abuja. Well, Nigerian women have been challenged to continue to positively contribute to the socio-economic development of the country. At the 2013 National Women Conference of the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials, which had the governor of Gombe State, Ibrahim Dankwabo, as guest of honor, the Lagos State Governor, Babatunde Fashola, says more women should go beyond rhetoric and take bold steps in all spheres of life. You can take more responsibility for a world in which you are not only half of the population, but you cross the other half. There is always talk about the men don't allow us, the men don't let us give us 30% affirmation, give us this, give us that. But really and truly, instead of asking, maybe you should change the rhetoric from who will let us to who can stop us. Now for their untiring effort aimed at sustaining and preserving the environment, some environmentalists have been honored in Lagos. 
This was the highlight of this year's edition of the annual conference of the Society for Environmental Toxicology and Pollution Mitigation held at the University of Lagos. Well, for the president of the society, the aim of the conference is to provide a framework on research and findings of environment issues. Environmentalists, academics, students and fellows of the Society for Environmental Toxicology and Pollution Mitigation, SETPOM, converged on the conference center of the University of Lagos for the annual conference of the Society and Fellows Award Conferment. This year's conference focuses on environmental sustainability through research, regulation and consulting. For the special guest, who is also the head of geography department of the University of Lagos, sustaining and preserving the environment is a challenge in Nigeria. The groundwater in Lagos, which services more than 60% of the population of Lagos, is really, really at risk. Professor Modula believes that with the population of Lagos State, the challenge of getting clean and portable water is huge. The pollution from the Lagos City's wastewater is very imminent. You know, Lagos is virtually one of the biggest cities in the world without any wastewater treatment. After the lecture, the society conferred on some environmentalists its highest honors. Thank you. Some of the recipients share their concerns about the environment. We are part and parcel of the environment. I like to echo that. We breathe air, we pollute the air. We drink water, we pollute the water. We behave like as if we do not care for the environment. Whereas whatever we do to the environment, we are doing to ourselves. You have a firm commitment to work with the society to ensure that the environment, the only one that we have, is not compromised by our development. For the president of SETPOM, the environment is everybody's business. The direction in terms of solutions that are going to be generated from a conference like this, this is where the solutions are being generated, and it will help the people in authority to really be able to... It will help the people in authority to be able to formulate very good ideas and solutions for the future. One idea that is unanimous at this conference is that a lot more needs to be done if the environment must be truly preserved. 